Joan Argetsinger Stites is an internationally recognized scientist in the field of molecular biochemistry. Her work has made a significant impact on determining the role of RNA in human genetic diseases. Joan Stites is not just a great woman scientist, but a great scientist, perhaps one of the greatest scientists of the 20th and 21st centuries. Her work has really led to a breakthrough on our understanding of how genes are expressed. This is a very fundamental process in biology, and she started the investigation of that and actually made many, many contributions to that field. The discovery for which my lab is best known is of little particles in the cells of animals and plants that are involved in a process called splicing. Although the work is very, very basic, it's essential to understanding how many diseases happen and what might be, one might be able to do therapeutically about them. While growing up in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Joan discovered early in her schooling that she loved science. She went on to major in chemistry at Antioch College. I remember being so enthralled when I learned about the double-stranded structure of DNA and that there might be a molecular explanation for what goes on inside living cells. And I thought it was just the coolest thing and it was clearly something that captivated me. I think what makes Joan a good scientist is that she not only asks good questions, but she is very rigorous in what the answer is. She checks and then rechecks and then double checks again to make sure it's right. My husband and I met when we were both graduate students at Harvard. We were married. We went together to Cambridge, England to do postdoctoral work and returned to the States in very late 1970. After she did a spectacular postdoctoral period at Cambridge, we went to Berkeley because I had a position there and she was going to be another postdoctoral position. But we, on the way we got offers from Yale and Princeton and when I put those letters on the biochemistry department chairman's desk at Berkeley and asked whether there was a possibility of a job also for Joan at Berkeley, he looked at me and said, she's a woman. Women don't want jobs as faculty members. They work in laboratories as senior research scientists. We are much better off than we were when I started in the 1960s. In becoming a faculty member in the 1970s, it was very, very lonely. There were very, very few other women on faculties. So now we're up to, in the biological sciences, 15% full professors in this country. And the same number applies to positions in medical schools. I think what one of the things that's very significant about Joan is that she has been a truly passionate and successful and great research scientist and maintained an interest in the politics and advancement of women in science and maintained a dedication to undergraduate teaching that is truly remarkable. I find being a mentor to younger women something very rewarding and something that I think is very, very important because I had superb mentors, but none of them were women. I think that having women around and having women as mentors does, in fact, help encourage young women to do what they'd like to do and not end up questioning themselves and their own abilities. She taught me how to um, maintain very high standards in my teaching, how to maintain very high standards in my relationships with people in the laboratory, and how really to bring people in the lab together to work towards a common goal. I think it's important that uh, young women see other women in these roles because how else can they imagine themselves doing that? For me to see a woman as successful as she is, when I was a very young person, it meant a whole lot to me. And it was remarkable to me, me that she could juggle a home life, a husband, a son, and an extremely productive laboratory all at the same time. While immersed in her teaching, mentoring, and research, Dr. Joan Stites has been awarded some of the most prestigious prizes in the world of science, 
including the National Medal of Science, the Gardner Foundation International Award, and the Albany Medical Prize. I've been very fortunate to have won a number of significant awards, and I hope that they are sending a message that women can be very successful in science and that this will encourage younger women to give it a try. I love participating in science. I love being a mentor. And so I hope to continue doing this for a few more years, but I certainly intend to continue with my involvement in trying to expand the opportunities for women in science as long as I possibly can.